M0FXB Hamtech, welcome to my channel. Big thanks to Nick Shaw for his Quashing Dock firmware. I'm just going to show myself loading this. I've got my UVK6 that you can see in the background. We've got our cable, so dig out your UV5R cable. You're going to need this. We've got a link here to download the firmware loading software. So if I just, and I've done this so many times, if I click download, it will download the firmware as well, but the bit you're interested in, if we just allow it to do it, download, just up here. Now, if it gets boring, just fast forward. I just wanna show you step-by-step step how to do this. Right, there it is. So you can see this double click and then the one you want the firmware loader is called anonymous ps update if you double click that you'll get this little green folder appear hopefully on your desktop i've already loaded it so many times but okay so follow that i'll show you what it looks like on your desktop i'll put it to my taskbar at the bottom so down here on the very bottom there, you can just about see it. Tiny little green thing here where my mouse is spinning. Double click that and it opens up your firmware loader program. Okay, as you can currently see there. Turn off your K5, K6, hold down the PTT, turn it back on. You want the white light on top, then plug in your UV5R cable. Now push it in nice and firm. Okay. Plugged in. Right click your device manager, so the Windows squares. Right click, look for the word device manager to find your COM number. Double click the word ports. Scroll down and my COM number is USB serial CH340 COM34. If you need the USB driver, just let me know. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description of the USB driver, but you, normally Windows will load it anyway. So back to the loader software. We're going to go COM34. And you'll know if it's working and connecting, because when you hit connect, it will then allow you to, it, it will say the word disconnect. Then select your firmware. So how the easiest way to get your firmware, of course, thanks to Nick Shaw, we've got links on GitHub. But the GitHub can be quite confusing for many of us who don't use it that often. So what I've done to help, I've on my Facebook page here, Ham Tech Radio Scanner, I've added two links. Uh, so just go to that Facebook page, and of course I'll put that link in the description. And then go to the one here that the top one says firmware packed bin and when you click that we're going to do it it's going to instantly download and put into your download folder the bin file that you need it's just done it there okay so that's nice and easy now because then you can just click if you look here there's and it's small three tiny little dots remember your radio is in firmware mode so click the dots and then you're going to go to your downloads folder here and double click and I've loaded it so many times now and it will, it will you get this long program file list here. and I just click update and it's now going to send the special firmware that has been made to run the dock so it, it won't run without this dock now remember if you want to listen to audio and transmit we are gonna have to make a cable up for that but this will still work great as a channel editor yeah and uh, other it other items. Yeah, it's, it's still going to be fun to use until you make the cable. And of course, I, I need to learn how to make the cable uh, and, and myself. So the firmware's on there. You won't lose your memory files. Uh, so the firmware's on there. Once you've got the firmware on there and you're in normal mode, which we are at the moment, the next thing we're going to need is this new software by Nick. And of course, I'll link in Nick's video, uh, a full demonstration for you. So if you go down on my Facebook page here, and of course the, the GitHub links will be linked as well in the description, you'll see doc. So it works with the Quasheng doc. So we're gonna click that, we're gonna right, right click it, and we're gonna click open link in new tab. And straight away, again, it's I've done it in a way where you can just, it downloads the 
the file you need straight away. So look, quashing doc, double click. Now there is no connect button for this uh, when you run it. So we're just gonna run it now, even though I run it many times. And here's the file, and of course, it's easier to extract it somewhere. So create a new, you know, my advice is create a new file. So if I just delete one of these, delete, and we'll go right click on my, when we're on, when my mouse is on my desktop, we'll go new folder, and we'll call it doc, okay? D-O-C-K-2, okay? And then we'll get this lot of files that we've just got, and we'll go extract to, We'll find that file called doc. So we're looking on our desktop, which is the front page of our screen, looking for the word doc, because we just created that, doc2. Click OK, and now all these files are gonna be in this folder here, okay? And then we've got quashang doc here, which I've put a shortcut down there at the bottom. So if you right click, you should be able to go pin to start, or if you go show more, you can go pin sometimes to taskbar. Yeah, pin to taskbar, and it already is, and that means it's at the bottom for easy, easy you know, access. I've got two there, I don't need two. So I'm now gonna double click that software. The cable is still connected to my PC. When we double click it, it's gonna open up the dock, okay, which we've got here, and straight away, we can see the same frequencies that are on the radio. Now, I'm not really doing a full demonstration on this one because I need to learn it better. But you can see that we are connected, but we're not going to hear anything without this cable. Okay, so we're going to click. Uh, let's have a look here. See here, S P E C T. Here, we get these two windows appear. Uh, you've got a channel editor window, so that we can actually start using now. Close it there a minute. Move that up and then we'll open it again. I haven't used it ever, so you know, if I'm sounding like I'm a bit gray on this, you're right. So here, it looks like we can choose things. Now, let's read from the radio. So it looks like it didn't automatically read that. We had to read it at least once, and look, you've got this nice, so you no more having to find different software programs. This is quick, you're there straight away, and I really like that, even without the fact that we can eventually receive and transmit on our PCs. So let's just choose one at random. So uh, scrolling down, we can go, let's just double click one, we'll put a name in here. GB3, I'm just gonna make something up, AA145, dot 100 of course get the get the correct dots otherwise <laughs> let's go back one four five dot 100 and then one four five dot 700 again forgetting the dots one four five dot 700 wide or narrow and then you can choose your power Going along, the important ones are like your CTCSS, none, we'll go yes, we'll choose 94.8 further over, that's your CTCSS tone, everything's here. I mean, wow, Nick, you've done a blooming good job of this, I, I just can't believe it. Save, and you, know, you can save the file somewhere, I'm just going to do that just quickly. And What's this, magnification, is that going to make it bigger and smaller? Oh, I don't know what I've done there. Anyway, you get the idea on that one. When you're done, click right to radio. You've got load and save, so you can import and export files. Group, let's have a look at that. And ungroup, I don't know. I did the magnifying glass, it all closed down, so don't do that at the moment. Um, now we've got spectrum here as well. So let's just, I noticed that when I did select spectrum, it did change. Uh, it did change the frequency. Let's try it again. See that? And waterfall coming down. You can change the parameters here. Learning on that. Step size. Step count. Uh, there's frequency. So we go 434.5. Four, 
I do that one because um, that is my node. Yeah, and that did, that is on the screen of the radio. I know that the screen's gone out, so I need to go into menu. Menu is here, I believe. Is that MA? No. Let's do it full screen for fun. Look at that. Right, so we've got menu here. It's the same as the screen at the front of the radio. Exit, menu, go up and down the menus. Exit, so let's try VFO memory. Oh, it's just doing three now. Let me just see if I hold my, see if I exit that a minute. If I hold my thing on the, yeah, there you are. If I hold my thing on the VFO memory, it does go to memory channel. Hold it down, hold your left mouse, hold your AB, it moves down to AB. Cool, and then you can use the shortcuts that you would normally use. So six is a shortcut. Mind you, with Exuma, I can't remember what six is, but I know that if I go, um, let me think now. Are we using the F button though? Let's just try it, because I know it's got Spectrum on here, but let's go F5. Yeah, you might have to select Spectrum, you know, separately, but that's fine. Band, let's do that. Let's just hold our finger. Yeah, the bands are changing. Great fun, isn't it? Vox, FC. So, you know, you can pretty much do everything on the radio, plus the spectrum stuff, which I, I don't know how to do. Let's go back to the, the smaller size. There's a big settings window here. As you can see, now when you've got your cable sorted, up here, audio in device, that's my microphone on my PC, audio out, so it knows everything that's on my PC already. Volume, not sure what this means. Enable pass through, is it to do with an amplifier or something? You can change colors and all that. I'm not gonna start playing with colors until I can get the audio working. LCD background, LCD fonts, LCD font adjust. Yeah, so, you know, customization of the fonts. Uh, let's see if I can get this onto my memory channel. Hold down three. Oh, I have to close this window. Hold down three. Um, let's go up and down the channels. No, I can't find it. So we'll go to VFO. We'll go four three four dot five five zero. That's my node. Let's make sure I'm connected. I use Hubnet. Do you want to see Hubnet? This is my Hubnet node, and I just click Hubnet, and it joins me to the Hubnet system. Of course, I need a box here that I bought from G Seven RPG to do that. Yeah, it's on there now. If I turn up the volume on my on my other yeah, radio, so. you'll hear it. Uh, one four five. Three fifty. If it's clear. So with two radios, um, you can hear it as long as we're on the same frequency. But obviously, we definitely need to sort the cable out. Let me just show you the cable. So as Nick has said, you won't hear any audio until you've made this cable. Uh, it says here, cut one of the tails of the 2.5 mil adapter in half and isolate the inner conductors on both sides. There will be three, an outer shield which is ground and two wires, one of which carries the audio and the other carries the TX serial. So for, for definite, you're gonna need to buy this resistor Hopefully I've got one of them lying around. Someone will make cables for this and you'll see soon on YouTube there'll be lots of people that have made this cable and made a video. So I look forward to that because uh, it saved me uh, trying to get my head around it. It's not that it's, it doesn't, it's not that it looks hard. I'm um, just looking at So you've got two jacks, one's 2.5, one's 3.5 going into the radio. Then you've had, it's been split. 
so that one part goes to the line in. Programming cable, USB programming cable. So then you've got another connector to the actual cable. I'm guessing that block there at the bottom is the the longer section of the US of the USB cable that we buy from you know both on cables. And we've got plenty of them lying around. We don't mind butchering one up. So it'd be nice if we could just if if we could just go connector to connector rather than just but it's this thing about the um audio line needs four seven K you know additional resistor. That's the only bit that there, so you can see that left and right channels. Someone else is going to come up with a way of this, but the drawing does pretty much tell us what to do. So this section here is a twin pin cable on the right. So you're also splitting off these couple of connections to the, the microphone. So I think that's enough for now. Hopefully this will get you up and running. You'll be able to load it and look at it. And of course, within days, Hams are going to have easy ways of doing all of this. Massive thank you to Nick Shaw. Uh, definitely put the his video in the description here, which is very detailed. Goes right through all the settings. Uh, so thanks very much for watching my YouTube channel, 73.